Welcome back to the second and final part of our video series on Abraham's legacy. In the previous video, we learned about the eight sons of Abraham and their descendants, and how they shaped the history and destiny of different nations and religions. But we also asked a question, why did God choose only Isaac and Jacob to be part of his covenant and not the others? What made them special or different from their brothers? And what does this mean for us today, as we live in a world where the descendants of Abraham are still at odds with each other? Hi, I'm Matthew, and I am narrating for Gino DiCaprio. To answer these questions, we need to go back to the story of Abraham and his relationship with God. Abraham was not always called Abraham. His original name was Abram, which means exalted father. He lived in Ur, a city in Mesopotamia, the land of his ancestors. He was married to Sarai, who was barren. He worshipped many gods, like the people around him. But one day God spoke to him and said, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This was the first time that God revealed himself to Abram and made a promise to him. Abram did not know who this God was or why he chose him, but he trusted him and obeyed him. He left his home, his family, and his idols behind and followed God to a land he did not know. He was 75 years old at that time. This was the first test that Abram had to pass, and he passed it with flying colors. He demonstrated his faith, his obedience, and his willingness to leave everything behind for God. He also showed his courage, his adventurous spirit, and his desire for something more than what he had. He was not satisfied with the status quo. He wanted to be part of something bigger, something greater, something eternal. But this was not the only test that Abram had to face. Along the way, he encountered many challenges, difficulties, and dangers. He had to deal with famine, war, deception, and separation. He had to wait for 15 years before God fulfilled his promise of giving him a son, Isaac. He had to send away his first son, Ishmael, and his mother, Hagar, at the request of his wife, Sarah. He had to change his name from Abram to Abraham, which means father of many, and his wife's name from Sarai to Sarah, which means princess. He had to circumcise himself and his son, as a sign of the covenant with God. But the hardest test of all was the one that God asked him to do when he was a hundred years old and Isaac was 15. God said to him, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, and I will show you. This was the ultimate test of Abraham's faith, obedience, and love. How could God ask him to do such a thing? How could he kill his son, his only son, the proper heir, whom he loved, and whom God had promised to make into a great nation. How could he give up the most precious thing he had, the one who carried his legacy, his hope, and his future? But Abraham did not question God, or argue with him, or refuse to do his will. He trusted him and obeyed him. He took his son, his only son, and the proper heir, whom he loved, and went to the place that God showed him. He built an altar, arranged the wood. His son Isaac voluntarily let his father bound him, and Abraham laid him on the altar. He took the knife and raised his hand to slay his son. But at that moment, an angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. He took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. And the angel of the Lord said to him, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. This was the final test that Abraham had to pass, and he passed it with flying colors. 
he demonstrated his faith, his obedience, and his love for God. He also showed his sacrifice, his surrender, and his willingness to give up everything for God. He was not attached to anything, not even his son, his only son whom he loved. He was willing to let go of everything and trust God to provide everything. This was the reason why God chose Abraham, his son Isaac, and his grandson Jacob to be part of his covenant and not the others. Because they had the same faith, obedience, and love for God as Abraham, they also had the same courage, adventurous spirit, and desire for something more than what they had. They also had the same sacrifice, surrender, and willingness to give up everything for God. They were not perfect. They made mistakes, they sinned, and they struggled. But they always came back to God and followed His ways. But you might wonder, why did God say that Isaac was Abraham's only son when he had another son, Ishmael, who was older than Isaac? Wasn't Ishmael also Abraham's son and his firstborn? How could God ignore him and favor Isaac over him? The answer is that Isaac was Abraham's only son in the sense of a familial relationship and a proper heir, not in the sense of a biological son. This is because God had instructed Abraham to send away Ishmael and his mother Hagar at the request of Sarah, who did not want Ishmael to be an heir with Isaac. Genesis 21 verses 10 to 12. Therefore, by the time of the sacrifice, Abraham had only one son left, Isaac, whom he loved and obeyed. This is also consistent with what the Jewish tradition says, that Isaac was the son of the promise, the one through whom God would establish his covenant with Abraham and his offspring. Ishmael was a son of the flesh, not of the spirit, and he was not part of God's plan to bless all nations through Isaac. He was the father of twelve princes, who became the leaders of twelve tribes, but they were not the chosen people of God. And this is what it means for us today, as we live in a world where the descendants of Abraham are still at odds with each other. We need to learn from Abraham, his son Isaac, and his grandson Jacob, and their faith, obedience, and love for God. We need to trust him, obey him, and love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We need to leave behind our idols, our comfort zones, and our attachments, and follow him to the land he will show us. We need to be willing to sacrifice everything for him, and let him provide everything for us. We need to be part of his covenant, his promise, and his blessing, for us and for all the nations of the earth. This is the story of Abraham's legacy and Abraham's choice. The choice to follow God no matter what. The choice is to be a blessing, not a curse. The choice to be a father of many, not a father of few. The choice is to be a friend of God, not an enemy of God. What about you? What is your choice? Will you follow Abraham, his son Isaac, and his grandson Jacob, and their faith, obedience, and love for God? Or will you follow the other sons of Abraham, their descendants, and their ways? which are not God's ways. The choice is yours. Choose wisely. Choose well. Choose life. Shalom.